business innovation. Yeah, with unintended consequences that we see everywhere, you know, of addiction, burnout, inequality, destruction. So let's transcend reductionist ideologies and embark on a paradigm shift. So from extraction to fair value circulations, from solely human-centric design thinking to life-centric design, from short-term lean methodologies to embracing systemic thinking, from competing in zero-sum games to collaborating for win-win-win scenarios, from sacrificing health for career success to thriving holistically while excelling, excelling in business. Is all this possible? We believe it, yes, it is possible. So when we ask the right questions and we focus and can really work from our inner self and everything that we have inside and we have to give and to serve to this world, all this is possible. And a lot of blooming, uh, um, I would say, yeah, connections and constellations are happening all the time. So we have six models, yeah? Introduction to regenerative innovation, regenerative economy, regenerative design, technologies, ecological civilization, and how do we collaborate on this spaceship Earth? We have invited some of the really, um, you know, people that we believe a lot in. So I'll propose them later, but I think this slide is for Janai. Thank you so much, Rudy. Um, Thank you. So, okay. Although we call it a program, a 12 weeks online program, it's a little bit different than that. Obviously, we have amazing experts who are um, experienced, but also passionate about regenerative innovation and transformation, and who have embarked on this journey, some of them a couple of years ago, some of them decades ago, which some of, some of them you're gonna meet today. And we have unique content that brings together a holistic approach from economic Economies, finance, to cultural transformation, to cities, to technology, anything that you would require to combine in your innovation efforts, we, we brought them to you in these six modules that Rudy has uh, shared. And each session will be facilitated by one, two, or more experts whom you are going to be connecting and receiving first-hand, first-experience guidance on your unique cases. Besides connecting and learning, designing is very important. We believe in getting hands-on and going beyond the theory. And in that sense, we are going to have design workshops where we are going to be designing our conscious business models, a regenerative enterprise uh, roadmaps, and we are going to be designing how we can use technology for our innovation efforts. So you don't need to wait to really um, just understand and try to do it yourself but we invite you to participate in this program, cultivating also the skill sets and the attitudes of being a regenerative designer with life-centric principles where you also combine your business goals together with experts in a community of doers. After designing, we have the pilots where we will take our practices into tangible, actionable uh, platforms and opportunities where we are gonna have the experiences of future scenarios today so that you will understand which areas are really a good fit for your innovation efforts, whether it's your readiness, your team's readiness, or the uh, pathways that are opening for collaboration. And in that sense, our DAO partner Haifa will be a great asset and a guide for us to bring those opportunities with ecosystem partners to wider audiences and collaborations. The fourth step is practice. This is where the RX community comes in. And we are gonna be together not only 12 weeks, but we have something called 13 superpowers where we invite you to learn, practice, and cultivate some of these superpowers of humanity every month, a 90 minute session for one year. During this time, we are going to be together on Mighty Networks. We are going to be exchanging and celebrating, sometimes receiving support or providing support to each other. But our journey of learning and practicing will continue for 12 months, and thir including 13 superpowers. In that practice, we will also have inquiry circles. Catherine is here, where we will invite you to create circles, subgroups, 
And no matter what you're going through, whether it's a regional conflict, whether it's something that we need to really look at together uh, based on our interest or industry, or maybe it's a transition we need to make in these inquiry circles, we are gonna keep it alive and we are gonna keep the fire alive during this um, entire journey. Then we have the growth. The growth part is super important because as a part of regenerative principles, we want to really grow our capacity of regeneration. So we will enable you to, with the skill sets and the methods that you can carry forward, not just for yourself, but also for your teams, for your communities, and for the places that you are operating in. That's where our well-being assessment comes in, together with our partners of their success. We are going to be practicing a well-being assessment in six pillars and taking a look at your risk of mental burnout and how we can improve your health and well-being from somatic to physical to mental to energy performance, as well as living by your values, the integrity and morality. And the well-being assessment will be also available with the pilot partners to your teams and we will guide you how to improve your well-being because as Catherine opened this circle in the end, it's all about being here and really utilizing and flourishing our own seeds. So these are the six pillars of our program and we are very excited to really embark on this journey together. Thank you, Janai. And yeah, you understood it. This is a holistic approach of how we do business and how we see business evolving not just you know, business from the mind any longer, but also how can we lead from the heart and how can we listen to our body in a sensing uh, body connected to nature also. So we also apply uh, some of the theories like theory U from uh, Otto Schwarmer, which is about co-initiating, you know, becoming aware of like what is really living inside our body, what is tintling, what is like emerging from within us. And then also to observe and to sense of like what is happening to then really connect to self and nature and then move upward again to co-creation and prototype together uh, the new and then co-evolve and how can we inst institutionalize the new, you know, from micro, meso and macro change. So we have different methods also, but we are very confident also in the methods that we apply have also had a groundbreaking and, and, and change in programs that we have been following and in ourselves and with lots of people that we know. We have amazing speakers, some of them, Douglas Rushkoff, Ashley Pollock from Vivo Barefoot, Jeremy Land uh, from The Web of Meaning, Michelle Holiday, The Age of Thrivability, Brandon Graham Dempsey with uh, Metamodernism and Spirituality, and then Lisanna Beuk who has the concept of graceful uh, AI. So these are just some of the speakers. Um, you can see all the speakers on the website and, and follow the link. Uh, perhaps somebody can post the link in the chat. And we also have Earth Elders and Indigenous uh, Wisdom. We have Lila June, who's gonna do a session on like how we can connect back to nature and how we can learn actually from indigenous wisdom and, and, and wisdom that has been here for hundreds and thousands of years and that we may somehow have forgotten. So how can we tap into that again and also uh, use that as an inspiration in the way we can you know, do business connected to our hearts and nature. And we have also two Earth Elders uh, from um, uh, the Earth Elder Project, Mindahi Bastida, who's from uh, Mexican, and then Rutendo Nigaga, who's from South Africa. So we will have a session together with them also where they share their wisdom. Uh, we also contribute 10% of our profit to the Earth Elders and that project. So, and we intend also to continue that with all our projects. Uh, this year, also superpowers who will become available also on as monthly sessions for uh, people who cannot join this program. We also have a program in autumn yeah, for your info, which you can subscribe already to. There are actually a lot of people already signing up for that. And then our target audience. Do you want to say something about this, Janai? Yeah, very quickly. People? Yeah? We believe in the um, diversity and collaboration um, 
makes really innovation regenerative. So from CXOs in corporate environments to founders of startups and scale-ups, academicians, consultants with their individual agencies and consultancy practices, as well as wealth stewards, especially in family offices, you are all more than welcome. We understand the pain points of really trying to find the information, find the right people, not only understand it, to integrate it, practice it, decrease the risk of your investment time, energy, and money, and being future fit, being relevant. Also combining the practice of while sustaining and increasing your profits and growth, and uh, making good, good projects, good impact in the end. And as if this is not enough, while doing all of that, be healthy, be well, <laughs> because we have one life to live. So we understand it's a lot. And that's why we are offering this program as a, as a bridge and, and with amazing ecosystem players uh, to find ways how we can make it effective, efficient, but also a beautiful journey uh, with uh, honoring our potential together. I want to go quickly, Rudy, because we, are, we, we have a beautiful, beautiful panel now. Now, so our invitation to you is to participate to this journey. And uh, when your next program starting on the 23rd of September, this is our launch campaign. And um, today I want to invite you to ask your questions in the comments, whether you are on Zoom or on LinkedIn. Uh, we are gonna start a beautiful conversation with our uh, valuable, precious partners, speakers, and hosts here. And while we are talking, uh, please feel free to also participate with your questions. Thank you, Rudy. Um, so, dear Niels, Catherine, Ronnie, and Alex, I would like to invite you uh, to share a, a little bit about yourselves. And because you are all uh, regenerative innovators in your own domains, I would like to ask you about the the real conversation, okay? And Alex, I, we, have, we have a lot to digest from AI to new economic models to decentralization to, you know, political turmoils and obviously the climate um, changes. In the middle of all of this, do you believe regenerative innovation is really the thing to focus on, to invest on, and why? why now is the time, why this is important, and to be aware of um, some of the hurdles, some of the difficulties of the regenerative innovation and making this transition. What are your experiences, maybe in your own domain, maybe with the, with, through your practices with other companies, other partners going through, and what do you suggest? How to go through them? We don't want to do the same mistakes. That's why we, we like regenerative innovation. Can you please tell us what are the really important things to focus and what are the ways to make it easier, less suffering for all of us? And uh, I really appreciate if you can also talk about what will be your contribution and role in the program. Please start as you wish, and then uh, we continue. Thank you. I suggest we start with Niels. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can jump on. So um, I think what is beautiful is that uh, all you put together, Jenna, is actually what people are going to go through uh, the program. Um, so there are loads of questions. Uh, we don't have all the answers. But what I would say is that um, actually we are losing the game. Um, and the game we're losing is the way our economy works, the way we relate to each other, the way we belong to the natural world and, and kind of living systems. And the key question, and, and I think that's the reason why regeneration is needed, is that we need to reinvent the rules. Um, and the rules have to be written by uh, the many and not by a few. So it's like, how oh, do we move away from kind of a top-down perspective of actually looking down like an elite, looking down at a few people and deciding for them? You see it in the relationship between the global north, the global south. You see it like with inequalities in every single uh, country, but also neighborhood. And the key question is like, how do we co-create something that is actually new? So how do we let the old die and the new kind of get into life? Um, and, and we are 
basically at the beginning of, of writing the story. And, and what I want to insist on is that um, while regeneration might feel a bit overwhelming and a bit theoretical, actually it's very simple in practice. So we don't necessarily have all the solutions to do the transition from what it is, what it was to what it's going to become. But we actually have all the answers when it comes to um, indigenous wisdom, to nature wisdom, to examples of, of what's happening in, in every rhythm and cycles. Um, so in that sense, I would say, like, don't be afraid of getting in. Um, don't be afraid of asking yourself questions. Um, we we are a collective, and, and I'm really pleased to join this collective with the amazing kind of work of, of Rudy and Janai to actually bring us together. But but what we've got to do is is actually to to grow this this wave of regenerators, um, and it's it's as simple as as caring for the earth, caring for ourselves, becoming conscious of who we are, becoming conscious of the preciousness of what surrounds us, and becoming conscious of the importance of being and and welcoming the interconnection that we have um, with with the living world. And in a few words, um, I will be glad to be uh, facilitating a session and a workshop about uh, the Compass for Regenerative Business, which is basically a model that we co-created and that we've, uh, we talk about in our book, The Regenerative Enterprise, um, that was launched recently and, and has been shared by Rudy and, and Chennai and will be shared again. And what you will be invited to do is very practically looking at how do you move from where you are as an organization, as an individual, wherever you are, whether you're very advanced or at the beginning of the journey, um, and basically looking at practical steps to make improvements, to make a positive impact. Um, so while supporting your business and your purpose, really deep diving into what does it mean when it comes to the environment, when it comes to the people that surround you, and kind of looking at your organization through a new lens, kind of reinventing, using a, a new pair of of glasses that will help you see the world in a different way um, that will help you becoming future fit and kind of uh, facing the challenges of today, but also tomorrow and, and being like a step ahead from many other organizations that are still lacking the understanding of, of what's needed. I cannot wait to use the compass and uh, get on it. Thank you so much for inviting us to really care, be open, Take it wherever we are, and there is no judgment. There is always a way, and that is the only way forward for humanity and for the life of this planet. Thank you, Niels, for making it such a joyous, um, delicious imitation, but also very compassionate. Um, thank you so much. Who's next? Roni? Call, call us out by name. Um, Niels, thank you very much for that opening it resonated with everything you said and thank you to Rudy and, and Chanai for putting uh, this program together you know we're in the radical collaboration phase it feels like uh, you know of this regenerative renaissance and us now coming together to help everyone else go you know shift and make this transition now is, is, is currently where we're at um, so it, it's game time um, I think everyone probably now sees it right the system is going to change. So the only real question for us is, uh, do we want to be part of architecting uh, our, our solution together or do we want to be told what the system is? And I think uh, everyone on this call wants to be part of architecting uh, something uh, new and different, uh, which, you know, as we move into a place of proof of humanity and AI and what that means for us all, um, you know, I think we, we now understand that the linear systems that we've been in have run their course and we're in a, in a place of, uh, you know, biomimicry and, uh, you know, follow it, following our hearts, as, as Rudy said. Um, look, just getting this grounded and very practical, uh, I, I was a co-founder of HIFA along with Alex, who, who's, who's on this call. And, you know, I get really excited about, you know, humans coming together for a common purpose. And it, you know, I was a banker before, like I've, I've been a, an entrepreneur for the last decade. And prior to that was a banker. And when I was a banker, I got to the, to the top ish of the banking profession. And I was really excited to work with a bunch of really smart people on a common cause. And I looked around, I realized they had no interest in doing that. That was, that's not the way the system works. Um, but the system we're moving into, it is exactly that. And 
it's amazingly rewarding. It's amazing. It's it's a it's a much more fun environment to be in. You have your own sovereignty, and cooperation beats competition every time. Uh, so if we can truly cooperate, we're going to be in a place uh, where this shift is going to lead us into a much much better future. So what's been happening for me? It feels like over the last five years more, um, various parts or cogs in the wheel of this sort of uh, organic machine that's been created of the new system have been built. People have been experimenting, they've been building, uh, and now we're at a point where we can start pulling these pieces and system, th these cogs together um, so that people can start executing on the system. And that's why we're starting to bring people in through uh, Regenerate X and, and, and other projects where we can really educate people on what this means to work in this environment. And I guess I'll just leave you with a few like touch points. Um, everyone's like oh, decentralization. Oh my God, you know, what a, what a shit show. <laughs> what a shit show. Getting a lot of people to agree on something. It's much easier having a CEO and being a company. Um, first of all, as a uh, desire, decentralization isn't the prize for the sake of it. I think it's important to view decentralization and centralization as a continuum, which we can slide along at different points in the cycle. So there are ways to have certain uh, safeguards and, and pieces of control in governance, which allow you to transition into decentralization without feeling like you've lost control. So the nuances around that, and I think that's really important. And we'll be sharing some of those tools as we go, as we dive dive deeper. Um, I think, yeah, th that that's one piece. And then the other piece is that the, the great thing is, is that the young are already there. They are, if you want to get somebody who really believes in what you do to work with you now, being an employee is kind of gone. Uh, the great resignation and conscious quitting, people, you know, not working on purpose. Uh, you know, Gen Z and, 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 or, uh, the younger generations, they want shared value. They want shared voice. They want to be on purpose. Uh, so yeah, the momentum is here and now. AI, I think most people's timelines of five, 10 years move to one to three years after what they've seen over the last month. So everything's accelerating. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, the demographics are there now and uh, uh, the research and hard work's been done. Uh, so now we just get to execute with, with all of you and share all the mistakes we've made. So no, you guys don't have to. It's great. I'll pass on to Catherine. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. And um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm starting to chime with so much of what's been shared already. I was really pleased when you said, Ronnie, about this renaissance. And uh, I know, Janai, you said, keep it practical. But I do want to just briefly kind of uh, point to um, the 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 mindset that we've inherited, which is essentially uh, the Enlightenment thinking and the hyper rationality of that, um, and actually to think that we might be entering a, a renaissance that actually allows us to build on perhaps some of the strengths of that hyper rationality. You know, there it's served us; it's got us to a certain point. Um, but what it excludes is really uh, the soul. And so the eradication of soul really from our lives and from our works and uh, from our organizations um, gives us a clue as to what is needed to actually redress the balance and inspire the creativity and the hope and the sense of connection. And I know it might sound like a very... You know, even even within some of our communities, like it can actually feel quite challenging even to bring the soul back into these conversations. But I think that what you've designed here is actually a beautiful container to feel safe to actually talk about these deeply human characteristics, which, you know, are, are still part of who we are, I hope. <laughs> and how do we uh, nurture them and bring about flourishing? So. A lot of my work um, has focused on how we participate with healing processes. 
Uh, and again, healing is one of those words that's been excluded. We don't want to talk about it. We want quick fixes or cures or whatever it may be. Um, but actually, at the heart of regeneration is also a, 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 a very deep healing that needs to take place. Uh, I know that, uh, Rudy, you mentioned Otto Sharma's work, and he talks about these three divides, uh, the separation between self and nature, the ecology, self and society, and self and self, actually a spiritual divide. Um, and actually, when we really understand that healing is a property of all living systems, right? So while we still consider ourselves a living system, <laughs> which I hope we do, um, there's a lot that can be awakened within systems. And so that's what I'm really interested in. And to ground that into something that's tangible, I mean, it's lovely that we have um, Ashley Pollock from Vivo Barefoot. I've been working with them as an organization in helping them to land like, okay, so what is the thinking that we need to integrate into our own organization that then represents the type of culture and the way of being that we want to be in order to be able to deliver the regenerative um, impacts that we want to have in the world and the, the, the circularity in terms of our products and design and all the rest of it. How do we ground that in our way of being? And so really sensing with them, like, what is the language? What is the best fit for you that we can uh, start to design around and actually translate into a coaching model? So that's what I've been busy doing with organizations that are on a regenerative pathway is to say, OK, how can we find something that just fits exactly who you are and who you want to be? And how do we support you to coach that into your everyday conversations, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I feel a huge sense of potential and positivity around what is possible. Um, I guess um, just in terms of a few other thoughts around my role in this program, um, one of the things that I do all the time is leading circles and facilitating learning spaces so as a co-host that's really what our, my role is is um, helping us to just deepen our learning together recognizing that when we perhaps resonate with what's shared that's powerful data but also when we feel resistance with what's shared that's also powerful data like how do we just sit with some of the discomfort that we might feel as we go through a different you know, models, tools, ideas, etc. So I'm really looking forward to uh, the ongoing journey, hopefully, with those of you who are listening. And with that, I think I will pass to Alex. Thank you, Catherine. Um, yes, so I'm one of the co-founders of uh, IFI, and what we want to uh, to do in this program is to complement, you know, all the beautiful models, uh, speakers, and and different methodologies that will be brought to you as part of this program with the technology and uh, the blueprints, you know, that uh, go with them. Um, because what we want to do is to create a bridge, you know, between uh, the you know the the current um, economic system and businesses into this new regenerative space. And um, as Niels was saying, that's not something that is difficult to achieve. Everything is there uh, for us to start this transition. And of course, it's a progressive transition. And uh, what we are, what we are bringing with you know the technology, the, the processes, the blueprints, and the learnings uh, that we've accumulated over the last five years is really this uh, ability for your business to progressively, uh, or entirely, uh, you know, shift to models that are more circular, regenerative, and that can really include, uh, you know, at its core, uh, the different stakeholders, you know, the, it's a multi-stakeholder approach. And what is beautiful in these new structures is that they are organic, you know, they, they are including all the stakeholders that you need uh, to be involved uh, for your uh, business to be successful. So uh, that's really what we will be um, fostering during this program, you know, in addition to 
as I was saying, all the, the speakers and the knowledge and the wisdom that will be shared, we will also have, you know, what we call the IFA moments, uh, you know, and uh, different uh, workshops that will be, yes, <laughs> that will be integrated into the program uh, so that we can uh, really uh, share about the tools. Um, so I have a few slides, if that's okay, just uh, uh, two minutes. Uh, so what I wanted to, to introduce is, of course, the partnership. We are really honored to uh, be partnering with Regeneratex on this uh, fantastic journey, you know, because it's not uh, a traditional program, as we were saying, uh, you know, at the beginning. So we're here to help reimagine and redesign the impact of uh, your businesses through regenerative innovation. So really practically taking on your purpose, you know, what you want to achieve in the world with uh, your organization and mapping this out to the, the, new, uh, the new space. Why IFA? Because IFA solves a coordination problem. You know, uh, Ronnie was talking about going from competition to collaboration. And that's a, that's a shift that needs to be organized, you know, that needs to, uh, to happen in a way that can create value and impact for your organization and for the people forming your organization. So um, IFA can be the, is the underlining layer that you can use, you know, to build coalitions, for example, to launch ventures, to deliver projects. You don't need to, uh, you know, transition your entire organization at once. You can uh, just extract one project, one strategic project that you want to, to run in a new way, you know, uh, using all these regenerative uh, um, principles. Uh, pilots, you, or you want to uh, accelerate your growth, you know, you want to expand using the decentralization as an acceleration of your impact in the world. Uh, that's also a space where you can attract and empower talents, you know, because um, this organization is purpose driven, you know, is really focusing on the meaning. And a lot of people, uh, as it was mentioned, Gen Z's, for example, are looking for uh, this kind of uh, context to, uh, to, to express their talent. Engage community, make decisions collectively. That's really also something that is super interesting because uh, you can benefit from the collective intelligence, you know, in those spaces. And the decisions that you will make collectively will be much better, much, you know, ambitious than what could be imagined in the boardroom. Um, and deploying capital, of course, and measuring impact. So as, in a nutshell, that's a new form of human organization, accelerating coordination. And we are doing that by mimicking nature. You know, the entire design is really organic and mimicking nature. And for transparency using the blockchain. So just really quickly, the how uh, the, the DAO uh, possibilities for your organization will be presented to you and how you can immerse yourself into these possibilities and select, choose what you want to implement, you know, and how you want to implement them uh, because these are really flexible, configurable spaces, you know, they are blank canvas, but holding all the values and uh, the principles of, uh, you know, this new economy that we are creating. So we'll have a series of five moments, uh, a DAO interactive workshop, uh, you know, during the sessions where we will deep dive into uh, your organization and what you, how you can map uh, this organization to a DAO. And then we will also activate the Regenerate X uh, DAO because we want to include all the participants, the speakers, uh, you know, the experts into a space where we can continue the collaboration and expand it. Uh, and to finish, we will have 10 pilots, you know, at, at the end of the, or during the course of the program. And we will invite you uh, to a discovery session, to a design session and DAO creation process. So that you can, for your organization, experiment for yourself with your teams, uh, how it looks like to, to make collective decisions, to create value together in a decentralized, uh, you know, human uh, fashion. I stop there because I know that the time is uh, limited, but uh, we will have throughout the program all these touch points that will allow you to experiment, you know, these new spaces 
and uh, really be part of this adventure. Thank you so much for to everyone uh, who have gave us actually similar patterns, but from very different dimensions and different experiences and visions. I feel like really in good hands together. I believe uh, one of the opportunities for us with such journeys is to come together and um, to have a renewed sense of joy in our missions, not just act out of um, fear or the loss of opportunities, but to co-create out of love, love for life, love for fulfilling human capacity. And like Catherine said, um, healing ourselves in community, making the transitions together and uh, finding opportunities to express our deepest longings uh, through sometimes coaching sessions, sometimes through creating a DAO, a technology platform to see how we can belong to bigger visions, uh, bigger than the sum of part of us and find ourselves in flexible roles and creating opportunities that we haven't thought before. And all doing that uh, with not putting ourselves in danger of losing our jobs, losing our uh, profits, but really experimenting with cultures of transparency and collaboration. It's like going to the gym. You're not gonna run the marathon tomorrow, but we can practice it together. I'm a mother of two. We should have started it already. Yes, but sometimes it takes time to wake up. And like Neil shared, and there are dimensions to it, and there are waves of regenerators. And not one of us is equal to another in our own journeys. We need to walk our own lanes and answer the question of what I really want. But in the end, being together makes us stronger, more motivated, more courageous. And in the end, it's joyous to share <laughs> the problems and the opportunities in the end. So thank you so much. And there are a lot to say, but I would like to also uh, take this opportunity to share uh, some of the questions that are coming from the audience. Uh, let's call them also as participants because we are holding the space together. Your listening is bringing the attention and this is a co-creation. Mm, although we didn't hear your voices. There comes a question to Ronnie. Um, ah, so the concept of decentralization is expanding. How decentralization can support for belonging and feeling needs of human beings? Um, I guess there's a couple of ways to, to, to think about it. Um, as we move into decentralization, what's important is we are all showing up as sovereign beings. Uh, and so we have a, an element of self-responsibility and sovereignty that, that, that go hand in hand. Um, so that's a fantastic sort of starting point. If you think about uh, how people will show up to make collective decisions, for example, in a DAO. All right, you're coming up with sov your sovereign being. No one can tell you what to do. You can't tell anyone else what to do. No individual can fire you. Um, so it's great. You have a you you have an ability to be more fully expressed as a human. And in fact, it's required for you to be fully expressed as a human in that context. Um, so that's one way of thinking about it. Right, you how you come together, community. Um, the other way to think about it is if you took a hundred bankers from the bank I used to work, one of the banks I used to work with, and assuming they haven't gone through any of their own journey, if you just take them as is and you took a hundred people in a DAO, so all collectively decision make, that DAO would fail tomorrow. Uh, or it might take some time, but it will fail. Um, is a certain level of self-awareness of dare I say it, consciousness that's required to work in this environment. And not everyone's there at the same time. So this is a growth journey in itself. And that's why programs such as Regenerate X are so important because this isn't just about feeding you with a bunch of tech and go, hey, you can use these tools and go do it. No, it needs all, all your work, Catherine, and, and then everyone else's work here, China and Rudy, et cetera, to, to 
to get people into a space where these new, not entities, but organisms that have been given birth to uh, have the best chance you know, for, 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 for thriving. Um, so that's kind of the way maybe I see it. I'd love other people to, to fire in on that. Yeah, I would like to add on that. Um, you know, I'm 63 years old and uh, I have seen many trends and many waves and uh, in my life, you know, coming and going. And I, I, I've been working as a futurist the last 15 years also. And with all my, everything I know and all my analysis and, and how I stand in the world and all my transformations of the recent three years I've been through, I believe that, you know, the the use of technology of like DAOs and AI in a, in a correct way, you know, like uh, when we can do that right with ethical principles and the regenerative principles, if we can apply those two together, you know, to design the life that we want, because whatever we believe is possible, we can design it, you know, whatever we believe is possible, we can design it together. And I believe that, you know, we have not been, or at least in, in my life, I haven't seen any movement and any period in my life more exciting as now, because these parts are finally coming together. And we are at the crossroads, we are at the emergence of this renaissance or regenerations or whatever you call it. And, you know, in a couple of years, I'm sure that we're gonna look back to this and like, oh my God, Look how hard it was to convince people. But the thing is that we are not about convincing people any longer. We are about transforming ourselves. And that is the work, you know, like how can you transform yourself? How can you really move from whatever the concept and the conditioning we have been, uh, you know, um, uh, conditioned to? We can liberate ourselves from it. And also, you know, with these new uh, this new being and this new sense of being and these new connections, there is a, a really exciting time coming ahead. So I welcome you all to, you know, join us and co-create and collaborate with us because it's a very exciting journey. If I can just add a couple of thoughts to that question, because I think it's such an important one for today, isn't it? So, so the way I kind of experience it is uh, we've allowed or, yeah, we have allowed because we take uh, a, a certain amount of responsibility in this, as you were saying, Ronnie, it's our own self-sovereignty that we become atomized and hyper fragmented in society. Um, almost anything that happens in the news is bound to divide everybody 50-50 in new ways. So it's like we're really completely separated. And what that does then is it gives rise to the kinds of authoritarian structures that I think we're also noticing around us. And what's needed is to be able to actually um, actualize our self-organizing potential, um, whether that's in small communities, within regions, etc. So, so much of that has been lost. Um, and I think it's something that, you know, as regenerators, we're all about doing what we do through community. As you were saying, the power of collaboration is so much stronger than the power of competition. And yet we haven't really allowed ourselves to fully believe that. And I think that's the exciting journey as well. It's like how we learn to re reform community again, yeah. Isn't it nice to have a moment of silence? Especially after so much has been shared, not just words, but decades of experience, visions, dreams, but a shared humanity, a future being manifested as we are speaking and listening to each other. And comes in that silence a great opportunity to be self-sovereign beings, being a community who learns how to be in communion better, better than ever. And the amazing technologies 
that are available to us on our fingertips. And in this web of life, we look back to our ancestors. We can pull in the indigenous wisdom, the nature's wisdom in ways that are possible, which couldn't be even the dreams of our ancestors. And here we stand in a, at a threshold, knowing that what we decide, what we do today, how we innovate today shall not be named by the, probably if we continue like that, but one more generation. Oh, these are the unintended consequences of our parents, of our grandparents. Let's honor ourselves, our children, our grandchildren and grand-grand-grandchildren. And let's make them proud. Let's be remembered. These are the intentional results, gifts of our ancestors. Let's be that humanity, inshallah. So I'm like, is there anyone else who want to share anything, Niels? I'm good, Jenai. I think like, you know, silence was in my mind when you, you spoke about it. I was, it. It's so precious. And I think sometimes we, yeah, we just need to be silent. So I'm going to transition towards the end of this call being silent. And I'm extremely grateful for being in this room with all of you virtually and looking forward to being reunited with all of you also listening um, in a few days. Thank you. Was there anything else, Jana, you wanted to say? I think from here now, we shall just get on it. <laughs> take the journey. Take your most precious dreams, ideas, ideals, your beautiful selves, your whole selves, not just the business leader, the mother, the human, you know, the child within. Bring your whole selves to this journey. We are in good hands. We are in the company of each other. It's going to be a gentle 12 weeks of transformation. And from our DAOs to regenerative enterprise models to conscious businesses, we are all in. And you are very much expected and hoped for because we are the humanity that the entire life is waiting for to fulfill our capacity. Thank you so much, everyone. And um, I'm looking forward to um, co-creating, collaborating, and it's an honor to be on this journey with each one of you. Thank you so much. Have a thank great you, night. Jenai. Yeah, thank <laughs> you, Janai. And then I'm gonna go with my original whispering in my ear, what live is whispering to me, and I'm gonna put it on a dance song. So I want to thank you, Ronnie, Alex, Catherine, Niels, and also um, Danielle, who has been in, 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 in uh, organizing everything with the LinkedIn Live and the Zoom event. So I'm going to play this song, and I hope you love it. Thank you. Thank you. So we also will have some fun, of course, because we love having fun <laughs> and joy together. It's important as well. Thank you all. Thanks. Have a great evening. Thank you. Love the song. Bye bye.
Bye. Bye. See you soon.